guys welcome to sd traveler and today we are going to be doing the second podcast of my iceland um, adventure and i am super excited to continue this with you guys and to give you guys more information about iceland so that you can go and experience this amazing country there are so many things that i have to tell you and there's so many things to go over and so i am trying my best to get all of these videos done before I go on my next trip. For those of you that don't know, I am going to Colombia. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. Um, it's not just me that's going. I have two other friends that are going as well. Um, and I'm super excited to get videos and photos and to share all of the information about being down there. Um, I am super pumped and I can't wait. Uh, we're in the final um, couple of days, and when I get there, I am sure that it will be an experience of a lifetime. Not going to lie, it wasn't on my list of places to go, but I got convinced because my friend invited me, and the ticket was super cheap. So, if you guys want to support that, and you guys want to help me out, um, I do have art pieces that are made by me. Um, and they are made with love and I would really appreciate it if you guys would go to my website um, www.sdtraveler.org um, I will have a little link in the description below um, where you guys can immediately go to all of my art pieces and purchase a piece that you love today I am so excited um, every little piece that you guys purchase will go towards all of my travel funds and will help me with future travels. Um, and I'm also trying to downsize. So anything that you guys purchase will help me in the long run. Um, there are so many things happening in my life and I'm just trying to make things a little bit easier on myself. So thank you guys so much for that support. I really appreciate it. Um, and without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and dive right into this podcast and give you guys some information that you guys have been waiting for. Um, if you guys missed my first podcast, um, please make sure to go back and to listen to that. Um, that one was just kind of some of the lessons that I learned while I was over in Iceland. Um, maybe it will help you guys to kind of start there and kind of see what you guys think. Um, but today we are going to jump into money and spending when it came to being over in Iceland. I am going to compare some of the prices over there um, with like New Zealand. Um, just because even though they're two different countries, they are both international and they both are islands basically in the middle of the ocean. Um, so I'm excited to dive in a little bit with this and to kind of let you guys know like what I basically spent over there. Um, so just to clarify, I didn't stay in hostels. I didn't stay in hotels. I didn't rent a car um, for daily things and stuff like that. I didn't go out every night. Um, but I do have the basis of what I spent based on my experience. Um, I decided when I went to Iceland that I wanted to get a camper van um, just because it's a lot easier for me to actually experience things when I use a camper van. And this way you don't have to worry about having to put down a rental for every single day um, that you want to go somewhere. And I did do the entire ring road um, in Iceland. If you're not familiar with that, you should definitely take a look. The ring road is pretty popular. It hits a lot of the places that tourists like to see when they are over in Iceland. I did go a little bit off of the normal path um, here and there. Um, and this trip that I took... Um, was a little bit stressful, but it was worth it in the long run. I did some things that I am really happy that I did, but I didn't plan as well as I probably should have. So for the, these expenses, um, just kind of keep in mind that this is based off of someone who was there for two entire weeks and did live in a camper van for pretty much this entire experience. So for the first thing that I wanted to say, um, I would recommend if you're going to be there for longer than three to five days, um, I would consider buying your own groceries and making your own food. 
Now, the reason being is that I did go out to a couple of restaurants um, and I just kind of wanted to see what the prices were like there and also for convenience. Um, there were some days where it was kind of hard to get to a grocery store or if I just wanted actual real coffee. Um, if you guys listen to my first podcast, coffee is kind of sparse over there. It's kind of hard to get good coffee. Um, you can't just go to a gas station and get some. And you definitely can't get them in cans or in like your to-go cups. That's not really a thing over there. So I went to a couple of cafes. And I also went to a restaurant in the Blue Lagoon um, called the Lava Restaurant. So I have both sides. I have a breakfast type place and then I have a real restaurant that I visited. Um, and in both cases, in a breakfast style cafe, it cost right around 20 to $30 per person for someone to eat at a cafe. Let that just kind of sink in a little bit. Versus the United States or New Zealand, to be able to eat out at a cafe, it costs 20 to $30 to get something for breakfast. That's a lot. That's quite a bit of money to spend. Now, if you're looking at that for about five days and you're going out every single morning to be able to go out and to have food and real coffee, real coffee, like actually sit down. You're looking at $100 at the minimum just for five days. Now, for some of you guys, that probably doesn't sound like a lot. But then if you multiply that by two and you have two people, that's about $200 that you're spending right there. If you're on a budget, then this is definitely something to consider. Now, I only went out a couple of times. Um, so I didn't spend that much money to go out and to eat. Um, but for me, it was quite a shock to be able to sit down and to kind of get that price thrown in front of me and then to convert it over to U.S. dollars. Um, and the lava restaurant probably costed me 60 bucks for a meal. And it was pretty small portions of food. Um, and then getting champagne as like my main way of like getting a beverage because I did get the ultimate package over there. Um, so if you want to go to like fancy restaurants and stuff like that, like that's even more that you're going to be spending. Of course, if you're only there for three to five days and maybe that doesn't matter to you, but if you're looking for more of a long run expense, that is something that you might want to keep in mind, um, for when you're over there. Now, the camper van situation um, was a little bit different. I spent quite a bit of money on the camper van itself. I probably spent about $1,500 to $2,000 um, just to get the camper van for two weeks. Um, that is more than what I spent in New Zealand. In New Zealand, I spent about $1,000, and that even included the insurance um, and that, that's a lot of money. That is a lot to put down for two whole weeks. Um, I got more out of the camper van in New Zealand than I did in Iceland. Um, I had an actual fridge. I had a stovetop. I had, um, containers to put leftovers in. I had a queen size bed. I had some good storage, AC units, um, all the above, honestly. In Iceland, I didn't really get that. In Iceland, I didn't have a fridge. I didn't have a stovetop. Everything was portable. I had to basically be outside to make my own food because it was like a portable burner. Um, I didn't have uh, a fridge. I had a cooler. I had to put all of my food in a cooler and then put it outside to kind of keep it cold. Um, luckily, I was there in September slash October, so it was cold enough that I wouldn't get food poisoning if I put my food outside. Um, so if you're looking for certain necessities that you need, um, I would definitely recommend like doing some deep digging. You are going to be spending more money if those are the things that you need. Um, and for me personally, like I wanted to spend as little money as possible, so I just kind of put up with it. And getting the setup for the camper van was kind of a pain in the butt. Um, there were a lot of things that I didn't like about the camper van. There were a lot of things that I was a little bit upset about, but I put up with it because it was worth the experience to be able to see that country. 
Um, so if there are things that you're just like, you absolutely have to have, um, then maybe the company that I use isn't going to be for you. And I will go more into the com- uh, company that I use and kind of like what came with that in another podcast so that you guys can have more of an idea of what you're looking for um, and kind of eliminate things. Um, so that way you can get exactly what you need for the best bang for your buck. Um, so with that being said as well, uh, grocery store shopping, uh, prices are pretty normal over there when it comes to actually getting your own food. I could get three to four meals for about 60 bucks, um, which is actually pretty decent um, in terms of prices. And it was pretty much the same over in New Zealand. Like if you went into a grocery store, you'd be pretty much spending the same amount that you spent over here in the United States. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that when it came to money and expenses and having to get your own food. If you are a cooker and you love cooking and you're fine with making a meal every single day, then this is like probably the best way for you to save that cash. Um, so that probably won't be a big worry for those of you that actually do like to cook. Uh, for those of you that don't, the, um, there might be more money that you have to spend and just to be able to get food on a day-to-day basis. Um, so if you're trying to budget for New Zealand and things like that, then this is something that you have to, uh, not New Zealand, I'm sorry, for Iceland, (laughs) um, then this is something that you have to consider. Um, so really it comes down to how much did I spend in total? Uh, I budgeted for about $2,000 to be able to spend over there. That was not including the, um, the down payment that I put on the camper man. That was including the rest of the payment and then everything else. I spent probably about $3,500 um, in total, and that was way over my budget. Um, and that was like without doing any tours or anything at all. Um, that was mostly spending on gas and going out and um, making sure that I had a place to sleep at the end of the day. Um, campgrounds are a little bit on the high side. Um, but at the same time, like it was almost the same as New Zealand. Um, they don't really believe in free. (laughs) Free is not a thing in Iceland, like at all. So if you're going to be doing the camper van expense, um, you will be spending money no matter where you go over there. So that is something to also consider when you're budgeting and when you're thinking about your experience and kind of what you're looking for. So that's really it for today's podcast. Um, I hope that some of this has helped and that this will give you guys kind of a baseline idea of like what you guys are looking for. Um, I spent way more than I would have liked to over there. If I go there a second time, I won't be spending as much money. I now know where I can cut my expenses and where I can put more money towards. Um, And I definitely want to help everybody else out as well. I think that a lot of people out there think that Iceland is one of those places where you go there for two weeks and it'll be just like any other vacation. Unfortunately, it is a money pit. It is a tourist country. Um, There isn't anywhere else where in that entire experience I found where it was cheap. Um, So definitely like budget correctly for this trip. It's worth it but you will be spending a pretty penny. So just be ready for that. And uh, that's really it. That's all I got for you guys. My next podcast is coming out here in another day or two. I'm trying to set everything up so that you guys can listen to all the information that I have um, while I am away in Colombia. And I would really appreciate it if you guys would help support um, everything that I do by liking, following, subscribing, um, buying art pieces. Um, Every little bit counts. So I appreciate you guys and thank you guys so much for listening and for being there and for supporting this journey that I am taking. I am super excited about the future and what is to come. Um, So thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.